Um, What is up, my dudes? Welcome back to a fresh installment of Khaki Tries to be French for however many minutes straight. In this video, you're going to watch me try a bunch of Violette underscore FR's new makeup line. I ordered a ton of it the day that it came out and I'm going to try and pronounce French words. I'm sure it won't go well. I apologize in advance. This is not a first impression. I'm going to really try to get something great out of this and that's just what I'm gonna that's where I'm gonna start and leave that part of the conversation for the moment and also I'm going to swatch a lot of these products against other things that are kind of like them in my collection for context sake like I typically do so what I did end up picking up were four I picked up four of her liquid eyeshadow things yeah so I got two mattes and two shimmers. Here we go. Oh boy. Tundra, which is coral. Tutu, which is uh, a beige. I got, here we go. Oh, Rose de Roche, which is Rose Aurora, I'm assuming. And Blue de Menuit. But that's what I got for those. I also picked up her Petal Bouche, which is only in one shade, Amour Fou, and it is a blue red, and it's a liquid lip stick. And um, I mean, if you've watched my channel at any point in the past, you know that this is not my thing, and it's not my color, and that's kind of what I'm talking about framing it as. I'm really gonna try and get something that looks good out of this. I really don't wanna wash my face again today, but um, this might do me in. It's just a really, really difficult whole group of genre of makeup. You know, it's just a thing that I don't have a lot of practice at. And finally, I did pick up her little highlighter, this thing is called the Universal Highlighter. I'm just gonna read the English part and uh, she does, you know, say that this is universal. It's kind of a beige peach. So I'm gonna move you guys in. I already have my complexion products on. We will talk through applying these. I'm not going to put my blush on until I get the eyes on and everything because I kind of wanna make sure that everything coordinates. And again, I don't wanna wash my face again today, but uh, anyway, let's go ahead and jump in. <laughs> Um, so on my face so far at the moment, I have the Urban Decay Hydromaniac as well as my SPF. And then I just have uh, some concealer, some Kosas concealer on, you know, where I need it. I wanted to do something powder free, cream only, because this is supposed to be, and I'm going to keep repeating this, effortless looking. I feel like that's what we're always channeling with French girl vibes is the beauty that looks like, oh, this old thing. Je ne sais quoi. There. Okay. And if you're unfamiliar with Violette, she is a creator here on YouTube and she also has been, I don't know, she's worked professionally in the makeup space for a long time. She is French. I think she lives in America now, but uh, in, in New York City, but she, she is, you know, French has a very strong French accent and everything. And she very much is the icon for a lot of people of that effortless, don't put makeup here. Don't, you know, just, you know, leave a little bit of something undone. Like she's very much like a French muse type of person. And I think that was what really built the hype for this line is just that, well, the idea being I'm going to buy her makeup line and I'm going to be able to achieve that same effortlessness. That was why I spent my money. So anyway, we're going to start with her matte liquid eyeshadow. And I'm going to start with the easiest one that I would think to wear. And that is going to be the beigey one. You know, it's gonna probably be kind of a cool neutral on me. Let's give it a whirl. So they come in this, you know, little kind of lip gloss container looking thing. And that is, you know, it's got a doe foot. And on the box, they do warn you up front. It says rich, highly pigmented, underlined, color that seamlessly blends onto eyelids best worn with an apero in hand. I'm assuming that's a drink, like an Aperol spritz or something. So i um, gonna, you know, smooth out here. I've tried these before, like I said, I'm going to warn you up front the same way that she did. So pigmented, so pigmented in a way that 
I found to be incredibly unexpected. Plenty of liquid eyeshadows that I've used are pigmented. These are hyper pigmented. And so I'm going to, I'm telling you guys, I'm gonna go one eye at a time and that's the amount that I'm putting on because it just goes and 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 goes. It's great. Like I'm gonna split that between two eyes. That's what I'm going to do. There's really no reason to put any more of that on. And it just keeps going and going and going and going. I have never experienced a liquid eyeshadow that is this packed with pigment. And for some people that's going to be the best thing they've ever heard. Because sometimes these things share out so much that they don't show on deeper skin tones. I would say even though this is lighter than some people's skin, it's going to show up on any skin tone. It's just gonna be lighter than your skin, but it's that saturated, it's that opaque. And they say it blends seamlessly. I would say that that is the thing that I have trouble with is that it's not seamless. It, it very much shows a seam. <laughs> Like it just, you know what I mean? I can't get it to sheer and go full gradient on the edges the way that I would with another one and done eyeshadow or a cream eyeshadow formula. Plus my nails are really long. I think I'm gonna pull out a brush. I've been using this, the Rare Beauty kind of cream eyeshadow brush that they have. I did also use cream on my complexion because I wanted to have something to blend this out into because it would be very unforgiving. That's the word I'm looking for. It would be very unforgiving if you were not able to then touch your complexion up again afterwards. Plus, it's a cream highlight in this collection and I know that it's very slippy, so I wouldn't want to apply that slippy highlight on top of a powder look. But in my experience, these makeup items are so saturated that they do seem to lend themselves more aptly to a like a powdered, like a full beat almost, which is definitely surprising for me considering I was expecting it to be, you know, French girl, effortless, whatever. I was expecting it to be kind of low coverage. I'm really creating a very intentional shape here because I'm having so much trouble getting it to disappear. Sometimes you want things to have a stopping point, especially when it comes to a cream eyeshadow, it does need to have a point at which it shears out and then it just disappears because you don't wanna spread it all over your face. And you know, I talk about how I have to hype myself up sometimes to do my eye look by the time I'm done with the rest of my complexion because I realize that it is important, but I've often like, you know, lost my my energy or my um, my ability to concentrate by the time I get to that point in my routine. And this is very demanding of your concentration. The first thing is just, I guess, in the context of other things that I'm used to using, having to concentrate on using so utterly little of it is a little bit strange. Like that part is a little bit weird, but it's it's not that hard to, you know, get past. Um, but the other thing is just knowing that you're gonna have to concentrate so hard on keeping it isolated to the area around your eyes to the point that I, I don't feel comfortable. I've gotten a lot better about it, but I don't feel comfortable just applying this with my fingers because I do feel that it is, it's so pigmented, it's a little bit too hard to control when I do that. But spreads really nice and evenly. Both of the matte formulas do behave in this nice way where they have a really even texture on the skin and they do dry down almost completely. Almost completely to the point that when you do try and spread them out, you know, several minutes after you're done applying them, it'll pick it back up. I would liken them formula wise to the original blush formula from Rare Beauty the way that it's kind of shockingly pigmented and when you get it on your skin, you're like, I, I kinda don't know what to do with all of this product that I just inadvertently placed on my face. So, that again was the shade To Do and it is the beige of them and then this is the, like the, the peachier. I'm gonna skip this one, I'll swatch it for you guys in a minute, but um, you know, they're very, very similar. So, I admit that I did go out of my comfort zone and take a small risk by buying the blue one. And that is because I have watched 
Violette do videos in the past where I mean she's got these really luxurious like Jessica Rabbit size eyelids but um, I've watched her do you know these focal point kind of looks that really uh, revolve around something like a blue sparkly eyeshadow and they've been unbelievable and I was like maybe I can be like Violette and I just don't know if I can but in my experience this particular shade it's really not that saturated. It's a little bit skippy. I think that I want to try this as a topper when I get my Sephora order in the mail because I did end up ordering the always on liquid eyeshadow in Ultramarine from Smashbox. And I think that that very saturated matte blue is going to work really well under something like this, but this alone I'll, again, I'm gonna swatch them all for you, but I wanna go ahead and get this, this eye look on while I still have, um, I don't know, the endurance. So, they have a weird smell. A lot of this stuff has a weird smell, and I don't mean like weird like it's gone off, or weird like it's really fragranced, weird like chemicals. Like that has a not awesome chemical smell. It's not like alcohol, it's not herbaceous, it's, it's chemical. Like, and I, I don't, I don't know, the lip smells like that too. I wonder, does, does the matte smell like that or is it just the glitter? No, mm, this just smells like makeup. It kind of smells like paint, but this has like a, it has a funky chemical-y smell. Okay, so this one is not quite as like payoff rich as the mattes. And that's definitely what I've experienced with the blue one too. Like I wish for all of that, you know, upfront caveating that I had to do for the mattes that I could report back the same thing about the, what do they call them, the twinkling, because I want that to stay like that, but it doesn't. It just kind of shears out and it's not not pretty. It is a strange color. I mean, not everybody wants red on their eyes. Um, and I thought that it was going to be more rose and it is on me at least like more of a burgundy red. And I'm just tapping that in and getting it, getting it stinking everywhere khaki. Yeah, and the amount of red that is in there and almost like blue that's in there counterbalances, it doesn't counterbalance, it clashes um, against that beige in a way that I don't totally love. I'm just trying to make stuff work here, you know? But uh, I'm not sure that it really is. I'm not sure that those colors go together very well. Someone did comment recently, they said, you know, you'd always talk about how, you like I, you know, self-deprecatingly talk about how I um, end up doing a lot of boring eye looks that, you know, regardless of where my mind is at when I start them, they all end up kind of the same. And they were like, but you, for someone who has very small eyelids, you end up creating a very flattering shape. And I was like, well, thank you. That is a fantastic compliment because the one thing that you can't really change about your face is the size or the placement of your eyeballs. So that's what makeup is for if you so desire. Um, so yeah, you know, doing the best I can to blend that, oh boy. That 4K is selling me out, isn't it? That's not very blended, Khaki. <laughs> 4K is selling me out. So let's put a little bit of that underneath my eyes as well, and then I'll clean up with some more complexion product. I'm placing that on the back of my hand so that I can get a little bit on that brush. I do really like that underneath my eyes. It's a really nice, like when you just use a teeny tiny bit of it, it does have a really nice smoky quality to it. But you do have to be careful because as soon as it dries down, it'll pick back up a little bit. It's not super temperamental though. But that, look, at it's gone. Ew, annoying. Okay, well, hmm. Tried to blend it out there and I just ended up, like I said, picking it back up. Yeah, it looks almost like a berry shade. It's not bad, it's just not rose, you know? Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to be right back. I'll put my brows on, my mascara, my eyeliner. It's going to look a lot better in a second because we're going to define the lines. And then we will move into like the rest of my complexion and everything. And then, and then the lips. Actually, maybe I'll go ahead and do the rest of my complexion, just my blush and stuff. Save you guys the effort and we will get to the lips because I think I'm going to apply the lip in real time. <laughs> Instead of like doing a really nice comfortable time lapse, I think I'm going to make everyone excruciatingly uncomfortable and do it in real time. So I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. 
when in doubt guys, just match your blush to your eyeshadow and everything looks just a little bit more intentional. So I went in with my Danessa Myricks palette because it has so many options. And you know, I started with the peachy shades to mimic the peachiness of that beige. And then I just topped it off with a little bit of the kind of cooler, pinkier shades. Well, they are purple, but they turn pink on me to just try and mimic a little bit of that pinkiness in my eyes. And I feel like it brought it home a little bit. I think we're going to completely ruin it with a red lip, but regardless, it's all one collection. So that's where we're going with it. I almost forgot that we have a highlighter. So I'm going to use my sponge to apply this because I feel like if I do like that, it's gonna push the rest of my makeup around, but let's swatch her real quick so you guys can see. It's mostly a texture. It really reminds me a lot of the Merit Beauty. That's probably, you know, in terms of the actual shade, or actually reminds me even more of this. The Uma, super duper similar, except the Uma is more, I don't know, it's more pigmented. So this is the Uma, this is the Violette. Um, I don't really feel one way or the other about that. I think it's, I think it's nice, you know? Um, it's, it's not offending me in any way. Um, it, it's, it's fine. It's fine. I mean that in not a bad way, you know, but it's, it's, I don't think it, you know, set out to be anything, um, game changing or groundbreaking. It's, it's a highlighter stick and it's pretty, you know? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, I have tried this a handful of times. And I've tried it with a lip liner. I don't have a lip liner that's this exact color. So I'm not going to do that because it ends up looking a little bit strange. And I have tried this also cleaning it up around the edges with concealer and I'm probably going to end up having to do that again. But this is the Petal Bouche Matte Rose Petal Lips. And yes, I should set my expectations for this based entirely on the fact that this is not a product that I would buy usually from anybody, but it was more of a, an aesthetic thing that's like, well, if anybody could do it, that's something I would want to wear, it would be Violette. So that is what I based the justification for this purchase on. <sighs> But I am going into it with very much the expectation that like, you know, it's gonna be a difficult product to use because all products like this are difficult to use. I expected to be a little bit pleasantly surprised regardless. So the applicator is a little bit interesting. It's a doe foot that's a little bit flexible and has two flat sides on it, but not a typical doe foot. So I, again, all of her products, I mean, with the exception of the highlight are so insanely pigmented that I'm just gonna wipe like almost all of this off of the applicator because I I'm gonna get too much on. that it has gone <laughs> every single time.
outside the lines right there. I still need to clean that up with a little bit of concealer. I think I did it. <laughs> oh my God. And it is a very like mask friendly formula in the sense that it dries down almost completely. And if you want more saturation out of it, you can layer it, but it also can kind of come back and bite you in the butt because if you layer it in one spot and not another one, then you'll actually end up with a spot that is darker than um, all the other ones. But it's super, super, super thin. It doesn't feel like an old like Anastasia or like, I guess, like a Kylie Cosmetics or something where, you know, it has that thick shellacking feeling. It's very much like I don't know, it's just gone. Once it's down, it's kind of gone. Um, you can now see how when I do wear a bold lip, it uh, doesn't matter how much effort I have put into the rest of my makeup look, it completely overwhelms my face. And it's not a bad thing necessarily, it's just like my eyes are so small, I do so much work to make them look bigger. And then if I put something like this on my lips, it doesn't matter, like game over, my eyes are like, they just disappear. Also, I have uh, lip filler. So, you know, bear that in mind as well. If I still had like my old lips, I don't know, I feel like the um, liquid lip formulas, no matter how kind of smooth and light they are, they still kind of accentuate the wrinkles in my lips, which I have fewer of because, you know, I filled them with hyaluronic acid. So that's what it looks like up close. It's still not perfect, but I feel like trying to achieve perfection might end up, you know, biting me in the butt even worse. I really hate to say it, but like that's the finished makeup look. I don't know. <sighs> Let's do some swatches and we will get to talking about like the prices and the claims and then we'll move into my final thoughts. Cool. I have swatched the eye products for you against some of the other ones in my collection that I think are relevant. So To Do and Tendre Corail. Corail. Um, this is the sparkly rosy red. This is the blue du jour. I'm sorry. I, this is Vela from um, Vesca. So a very, very relevant comparison formula wise for the uh, liquid glitters. You guys know how much I love the Vesca liquid glitter formula. It really applies and builds beautifully, dries down completely. It's so agreeable. It's so user friendly. This right here is the Rare Beauty Nearly Mauve. You guys now see why I always talk about how all of the colors in the State Vulnerable Collection are basically the same because that ain't mauve. What is that? It could be rose, it could be neutral. We have no idea, but it's not mauve. Um, but regardless, it's a really great formula. This is Echo from the Glossier Sky Washes. And then this is the Color Fix Matte from Danessa Myricks in Creme Brulee. Another really beautiful formula. And I include these because they all dry down completely. So, you know, I have lots and lots of cream shadows in my collection, but these are the ones that come in tubes <laughs> and dry down completely. Oh, and you know, while we're here, maybe we just do the, you know, the Kosas, the 10 second eyeshadow, which I have grown to really enjoy. And it reminds me the most of the Charlotte Tilbury Oyster Pearl. So yeah. Those are the eyes. I'm going to swatch this lip for color comparison purposes against a couple of other things in my collection, just so that you guys have context if you are a red lip wearer and you are much better at putting them on than I am. So that is the one that I'm wearing right now. And then this is Vesca Dahlia, which I used to think of as a very blue red, but it's clearly like, you know, almost orangey pink compared to this one. And then this is Baby in the Glossier Vanillic Lip. So I would say if memory serves, because I didn't end up holding on to it, but um, I would compare this color and this formula the most to the Fenty Liquid Lip that I did end up returning. Even though it was a really beautiful color, it was just very hard to use, but a very, very similar kind of universal flattering blue undertoned red. Oh dear, oh dear, oh Jesus. So in the past, when I have tried to put this lip on, I ended up kind of cleaning it up with my fingers and this would happen a lot. It really, really gets everywhere. If you're sticking your fingers in it, you have already lost the battle to 
this lip color. Just concentrate on getting it in the right place. Let it dry down and then clean it up with a concealer brush. Do not try and stick your fingers in it. It will just make a fool of you. All right, let's go on to her website and read up a little bit about Violette FR, the brand. VioletteFR.com, shop makeup, skin, hair, and perfume. So yes, she came out with a lot of other different products that aren't just makeup. And God, she looks absolutely incredible, but like she always looks incredible. She can do whatever she wants, you know? Oh my God, her website is so cute. And she's like acting like all these people are so good at putting this stuff on, like without a mirror, you know? I feel like that's kind of the only misleading thing. Where I was just like, this is supposed to be easy. <laughs> Anyway, the Petal Bouche Matte, $25. I think that's a pretty darn good price for such a nice formula and a pretty color. The Balm Shine, the Complexion Universal Highlighter is uh, $25 also. That's a little bit pricey for something this tiny and precious, but you know, um, if it really is universal for you, then you know, it's not terrible. The you Paint, which is the eyeshadows, they are $28 a piece and I bought four of them. And she also has a dry shampoo and a little brush for 20 bucks. She came out with her own fragrance. It is, I don't know how much it is because it says notify me when available. Uh, apparently everybody wants to smell like Violette. The Boom Boom Milk is $58 and that is a product that she claims does your entire skincare routine in one spray. So it's your toner, your moisturizer, your oil, um, everything but SPF basically. And you can use it morning and night. And I'm like, maybe, but that's a big claim. Like if that's true, that's worth $58 of anybody's money. But um, that's, that's, that's a big claim. Y'all let me know. That's everything I believe so far. Vegan, cruelty-free, safe and effective ingredients and environmentally conscious, she claims. I don't know. The V and VFR, our differences, our weirdness, our je ne sais quoi is what makes us each who we are, and that is beautiful. Violette FR celebrates our perfect imperfections. So <laughs> I guess that's, that's the thesis statement of this face of makeup. Wow, am I embracing my imperfections here. So uh, let me move you guys out so you don't have to look at my face this closely anymore, and we will chat. Final thoughts. I am not gonna lie, guys. <laughs> I was dreading doing this review after I tried the products the first time because I know what a dedicated fan base Violette has. I happen to belong to that fan base and I didn't want to disappoint anybody with my review. I really tried to keep a level head. I also really tried to stay present in applying these products so that I could, to the very best of my abilities, make them perform optimally. I tried them a few times before getting on camera so that I didn't do that very typical first impressions. Ooh, oh God, oh, it's everywhere. Oh my God, this is terrible thing. When maybe it just was that I needed to adjust my expectations to the formulas, etc. So I really genuinely tried to do that today. And you know, sometimes I get a false sense of security. Uh, just living in a cloud of easy to use products. And I start to think either, wow, everything on the market is really easy to use, or I start to get a big head and think, wow, I guess my skills have really just come such a long way that I can make anything work. When really it takes a line like this where I didn't buy it because the textures appealed to me, I bought it because the person appeals to me and because her aesthetic appeals to me. I ended up inviting something into my stash that was a bunch of textures that I'm not personally that experienced with. And so I do want anybody watching this, especially if it's my first video you're watching, to take this with a grain of salt, understanding that this made me second guess my skill set. However, I think that I have a purpose on this platform for a lot of reasons because I'm not a professional makeup artist. I feel like I, among a lot of other people too, but I happen to represent a demographic of people who are intermediate at best <laughs> at putting on makeup. And I think that makeup, especially if you're claiming to be effortless, claim your je ne sais quoi, um, you know, it's supposed to be like this French girl, dab it on, no touch ups kind of aesthetic. I think that you should be gearing the ease of use to your formulas 
to a demographic of people who are not super, super good at putting on makeup you're supposed to cover like cover more than half of the distance in terms of difficulty versus the consumer skill set and i understand that my skill set does not include these things you know very typically although a cream or a liquid eyeshadow i have plenty of cream liquid eyeshadows that i absolutely love and these were particularly challenging even by that standard and i really like i was chatting kate last night after i had used it just the first time and i was like i need to get i need to get up tomorrow morning and give it another whirl because the couple of times that I tried it tonight, I just, I think that maybe I just didn't have my wits about me and I didn't have enough energy to really like give it my full attention. But in the first couple of times I put this on, all I could think was the attention level that I have to give to making this look okay is on the level of applying an entire face of a liquid eyeliner. That's why I don't use liquid eyeliner is because it requires so much patience and so much concentration that I just hold my breath the entire time. And I feel like the amount of effort of a liquid eyeliner does not equate to payoff in terms of the look that I get from it. And I am afraid that that is where I land on this collection as well. Yes, I was able to adapt my expectations after using it a few times to the nuances of the formulas, but I feel like for all of the work that I have to put into making these products perform in a way that I like to use them, in a way that looks a little bit effortless and doesn't require me to like, you know, tape off lines around my eyes and stuff and get some kind of really, really dramatic look, I feel like that amount of effort isn't worth what I achieve with it, be it the formulas or the shades. The shades are fine. I think that they will work for some people. They just don't happen to work for me so much. I think that the blue red of this lip is dialed in. I mean, yes, my teeth are fake, but it makes them look fantastic. And if I were a red lip wearer, this would be the color that I would choose. I would, you know, probably prefer a formula that was a little easier to use. I don't even know what that would look like, but the color is amazing. And if you are comfortable using this kind of formula, I would say that the lip is probably the winner out of all of them. It just happens to not be for me. It is for someone who is very, very comfortable wearing a red lip and someone who is very, very comfortable applying a liquid lip. Both of the things that I, um, you know, I fully, fully admit and admit it up front that just not me. I just wanted to try it for you guys. But the, the highlighter, while not terrible, is also kind of, it's just, it's fine, you know? I'm not sure I'll reach for it again just because it doesn't really feel super special to me. But I would say that on all counts, as far as the, the shades and the formula are concerned, the eye products are the most disappointing because they required so, so much effort. They stressed me out so much putting them on and I don't feel like they look very good you know? And I just have better products in my collection for those kinds of textures. I would absolutely choose the Vesca Beauty. They have kind of a, a brown and gold color collection and they have like the purple and pink color collection. So I feel like there is something for warm undertones and cool undertones in their collection. And they're the same price. And for that matte cream, you know, the Rare Beauty is lovely and it's, I think, even less than that. So in closing, I think that the biggest disappointment here is, you know, sure, were we able to make them work? Absolutely. But for this, at least my perception of this collection, trying to get to a French girl effortlessness, this was so much effort. This was so much effort and it looks like a lot of effort. If it took me, you know, there's a, like, I always want things to be easy and fun, right? That's, I think that I'm going to change the tagline opening my videos to like makeup should be easy and fun instead of like cruelty free makeup for everyday whatever. Like I genuinely think that people would be more set up in terms of their expectations of what to get out of my videos if I just told you up front, like I want makeup to be fun and easy. That is how I rank what's good. Sometimes things are easy but not fun. And sometimes things are fun, but not easy. And the payoff is worth the amount of work that you put into it kind of thing. This though, I feel like looks tortured. It doesn't look effortless. It looks effortful. <laughs> and I don't think it looks good. So yeah, this is gonna be an ugly thumbnail. <laughs> 
but hopefully I saved you some money and I do apologize if you're watching this video and you're like, you used all of the products wrong. This would work perfectly for me. Violette's a genius. She made makeup for me, not you. And you know what? That is fine. I am just one individual. And I hope that I provided enough caveats as far as my expectations and also my skill set and also my undertones and my coloring and things like that to help you couch my review in the context of, you know, what you might expect from a makeup brand. But I don't think it is anything surprising that you might come into this thinking that it would be easy. Easy. And it, this was very, very much not an easy face of makeup to put on. So anyway, guys, that is the review that I was dreading doing. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this, give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs down if that's your truth. <laughs> and um, if you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye guys.